Hello, continuing with our work in exponential and log functions, we are going to have a look at what the graph of the log function looks like. And it's going to be this blue curve that we've got going on down here, and this blue curve here. So with our log functions, a log is a way of allowing us to work directly with the powers of numbers. So if we have y is equal to log to the base two of x, that means that two to the power of y, so y is a power, is equal to x. So two to the power of y is equal to x. This relationship between logs and exponentials is in the top right hand corner of page 22 of our log tables. And anytime we see logs or exponentials, page 21, uh, I think I said 22, page 21 gets opened up immediately so that I see all of the tools available to me because logs and exponentials can be quite complicated to deal with and having all of our tools right in front of us every time is important. So again, two to the power of y gives us x is how we read a log. So if we have x is a half, we have two to the power of what would give me a half. It would be, well, a half is two to the power of minus one. So it would be two to the power of minus one would give me a half. 2 to the power of 0 would give me 1. 2 to the power of 1 would give me 2. 2 to the power of 2 would give me 4. So I can see that the, the log effectively just rearranges our exponentials so that we're directly dealing, our y outputs are directly dealing with the powers of our numbers, the powers of our base 2 in this case. Now, having said that, you can just put this into the calculator. So we can put log to the base 2 of a half into the calculator and it will return minus 1. But being able to interpret what the log means and how it works is going to be very important for multiple parts of the course. So we want to try and build up some intuition of that while we're building up some familiarity with the graphs of the function, which is admittedly our main focus for right now. Now, if we have a look at that function uh, that I have given you some points for here. That's the blue curve here. And if we have a look at the function here, which is y is equal to, so I'll call this f of x is equal to 2 to the x, and this is g of x, g of x is equal to, pardon me, I have not given myself enough space, g of x is equal to log to the base 2 of x. If we plot both of those functions, what can we see is happening with the x and y coordinates? Well, when x is 1, y is a half. When x is a half, y is minus 1. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 0. What's happening each time? We have swapped our x and y coordinates. Well, what happens when we have functions where we keep where the relationship between the functions is we just keep swapping the x and y coordinates. Well, we recognize that as something that happens with inverse functions. So that's one of the ways that we can recognize that exponentials and logs are inverse functions of each other. Now, the most important one is going to be log to the base e, called the natural log, is the inverse of e to the x. In the long run, that's going to be the most important one. But for right now, we can learn what we need from our uh, log to the base 2 and x to the power of, or 2 to the power of x. So if we draw a graph of this uh, fact here, we have our familiar function of 2 to the power of x that we already looked at before. And then we have it mirrored in the y is equal to x line. That's a dashed line I've drawn in here. We can see that the uh, curve here is mirrored with our log curve here. And that gives us a feel again for the fact that these are inverses of each other because we know that that's the visual relationship between inverse functions. Now there's a something that jumps out at us from that. We know that the x-axis is an asymptote to the exponential function. And if we have mirrored through y is equal to x, we end up with the uh, log function 
log function having an asymptote for the y-axis or the y-axis being an asymptote for our log functions. So if we have a straightforward log function that nothing has been added to, so we don't have plus three or x minus one or something written in here, so long as we just have log to some base of x, it is going to have an asymptote at the y-axis. Something that we can see going on here is that this line looks like it's going way down. It is going down towards negative infinity. So we do not, we say that the log function is not defined uh, at x is equal to zero. So if we put in any log of zero, we're going to get a maths error on our calculators because our function goes down to negative infinity at x is zero. So it's not defined properly at x is zero. So that's one point about the log functions. And because of that, because of how quickly our log function is changing here, you can see that I've got a point at x is a half. So instead of just going x is one as my first value when I'm plotting a log function, I need to remember to put in some number in between zero and one to give me an anchor point for this part of the graph. So usually when we're doing graphing, we just go up in ones. Sometimes we have to get clever with trig functions and go up in 45s or in 30 degree increments. The only thing we need to think about really for our log functions is that if we need to get a little bit more detail than just starting at x is one, because we can't put in x is zero, it'll just return an error, but we want to have at least a point in between zero and one, so we have an anchor point on our curve here. So that is our general discussion of our uh, log functions. So I have x is a half, would be log to base two of a half gives me minus one. You can put this in the calculator, as I've said. And don't think there's anything else we need to discuss on that, but just to point out to you in how we would read this. Uh, if we have a point, if we have a point two one on our log function for log to the base two, then the exponential of two must have the same point, but with the x and y swapped. So is that true? Well, we have x is one, y is two on our uh, exponential graph. So we can see that if, because they're inverses of each other, if we know a point on one of the functions, we can flip the x and y, we can reverse the x and y in order to get a point on the inverse function. Now, the only, yeah, the only other point to make is that just like uh, the y-axis crossing, the y-intercept of an exponential function uh, is always going to happen at one for a simple exponential function. The x-intercept, or the root, as we'd often call that, is always going to happen at x is equal to one, because any number to the power of what gives me one? Two to the power of zero gives me e one. Ten to the power of zero gives me one. A million to the power of zero gives me one. So all of these logs are going to cross the x-axis at x is equal to one, unless there is some modifier on them. So we can keep an eye on that fact that they're always going to cross the x-axis at x is equal to one, unless something has been done to change that fact. So let's have a look at a instance where we have changed that fact. So y is equal to log to the base a of x plus b. Now, I want to see uh, where my, I have two points effectively on my curve. I have uh, two zero on my curve and I also have four one. So those are my anchor points for finding a and b. Well, let's find the two zero part first because zeros often simplify things. So we have zero is equal to log to the base a of two plus b. Well, when should 
a log function return zero when we have a one in here. So we then know that at two plus b is equal to one. Uh, therefore, b is equal to minus one. So we now know that y is equal to log to the base a of x minus one. Now, how are we going to find the value of a? Well, now let's see if we can use the other point. So when x is four, y is one. Of four minus one. So I end up with one is equal to log to the base a of three. So using my definition of logs or a to the power of one gives me three. So a to the power of one gives me three. So my function is log base a of, sorry, base three of x minus 1. So that's how we can use our points to figure out, if we know points on the curve, how we can use them to figure out uh, our missing terms.